Hey, what's up guys? This is episode 38 of a series where we examine the cut content, design, and development of Fallout New Vegas. Companions are easily one of the best aspects of Fallout, and in today's episode, we're taking an in-depth look at their cut content. Second, he doesn't like hats, or the people wearing them. Don't ask. I have no idea why. Maybe because it rhymes with rats. When talking to the king in Freeside, he mentions that Rex hates hats and rats. Rex does hate hats as he barks or growls at characters wearing one. However, his true hatred was of rats, and this was actually supposed to play out in-game. Rex was intended to chase down and kill any giant rats in the same area. The King's dialogue implies Rex was meant to hunt mole rats as well. One attempt, Rex's rat sonar, worked by causing a huge invisible explosion that caused no damage or knockback, instead simply checking what it hits to see if it's a rat or not. If one was found, a message would warn the player Rex detected a live rat. The script would then quote, make him go wild and attack. This would trigger Rex to search, but due to the way combat detection works in the engine, he doesn't find and attack them. There is also an unused dialogue topic called Rex Smells a Rat. This suggests the player could choose this option while talking to Rex, and he would then search for rats. However, it's very possible this was for debugging and never intended for the player to actually use. After several attempts and little progress, the idea was eventually abandoned. It would have made for some interesting encounters as Rex recklessly chased after rats, potentially getting you into some dangerous situations. It also would have made keeping him alive much more challenging on hardcore. Regardless, it's truly a shame this was cut because Rex is a good boy who deserved more content. During my interview with tech producer Jason Fader, he mentioned the cut concept of a companion inspired by the 2010 B-horror film, Rubber. If the player had the Wild Wasteland perk, this Wind Brahmin or Tumbleweed NPC would appear nearby and roll away. If the player happened to notice the Wind Brahmin, they could pet it, compliment it, and eventually it would become a follower. After befriending the Wind Brahmin, it would randomly spawn to either follow you around for a bit or attack an enemy. This autonomous, murdering tumbleweed never made it past the stage of being an idea, but it would have been one of the most memorable companions in the entire series. There's a cell containing an alternate version of Lily Bowen before she was transformed into a super mutant. There are models for her grandchildren, Becky and Jimmy as well. While the player was never meant to see these characters, they're still used to deliver dialogue for part of Lily's companion quest. Lily has a third weapon called Lily's Gauntlet. It's possible the player was intended to acquire it somehow, as it has an unused Pip-Boy icon. All of the humanoid companions have lines for being lit on fire during combat. While these lines are in-game, the trigger for them was never set up or was deliberately removed. It's possible this was cut because these lines are fucking horrifying. In the final game, you can only have a single humanoid companion at any given time. However, a conversation with Mortimer at the Ultralux reveals it was once possible to have two. Normally this line is inaccessible as it requires the player to have two humanoid companions. Which one? Josh Sawyer revealed the reasons this was cut. Game balance and console memory. Balance-wise, adding one humanoid companion makes the game much easier. Adding multiple humanoid companions makes it trivial. 
Memory-wise, companions are some of the most expensive characters that can be loaded. In a Tumblr post, Josh Sawyer recalled another cut idea. E.g., very early in FNV's development, Eric Finstermaker asked if we could have companion interjections in conversations. Because the engine didn't support it at all, and we had very little understanding of how the Convo camera worked, I refused the request. Eric wasn't wrong to want it, it could have added a lot to the game. I just couldn't commit designers to writing interjections that early without understanding how the tech worked better. At one point in development, companion romance was considered. Josh Sawyer commented on this, stating, There are always things you'd like to do differently, but nothing I can really point to as a thing we cut that I regret. I guess Ulysses, but that was a necessity, and it all worked out in the end. The only other big ticket items that were cut were romance options for companions and post in game content. But in both cases, neither was ever actually implemented in any way. We cut them before any actual work was done. In the case of post in game content, we've already explained why we didn't do that. And for romance, it was clear that it wasn't going to be fun or interesting in any way. Also, Avalon really hates romance at games. Lead producer Jason Bergman expanded on this even further. Funny bonus fact, if you romance Cass, the plan was that you were both going to get drunk and wake up married. And there was an idea, if your rep was high enough, the player would get married to their companion by the king, with him singing Love Me Tender, a la Nick Cage in Wild at Heart. Which, of course, never, ever would have been possible. We'd have to pay insane amounts of money for performance rights to an Elvis song. If you dismissed a companion, they originally walked back to their starting location or the Lucky 38. As a result, it was very possible to unintentionally kill them during a hardcore run by dismissing them in the wrong area. Or in Boone's case, he might just take out an entire Legion settlement all by his lonesome. This was later changed so they teleport to their final destination. Of all of the companions that made it into the game, Cass, the Caravan Booze Hound, has by far the most cut content. First, Chris Avalon revealed that her companion perk was once completely different. We did iterations on her perks to make them more personality-centric. Cass's initial perk was carrying more water or giving a bonus healing for water. But after kicking it around with Josh, we settled on the Whiskey Rose perk, which we thought would make her more valuable as a companion game mechanic-wise, and also reinforced her hard drinking personality. While the Whiskey Rose perk made it in, the voice lines associated with it did not. These were meant to play any time the player drank whiskey with Cass. Ah, oh, that hit the spot. All right, now for some ass kicking. Pass the bottle. Now all I need is some shame to wash it down with. Bottoms up. Ah, now there goes the pain. Cass also has unused dialogue about the kings and freeside. While you can hear some of these, several never play. Looking for love or to put me to sleep, kid? If you're looking for action, grab some grease from your hair and give your gun a few pulls. Not interested in any weapon that shoots blanks. Not for all the whiskey in Reno. Barking up the wrong barstool, kid. If you're looking for action, jam your dick in a locker and slam it a few times. A drink wouldn't make you any prettier, Slick. As long as you leave right after you put your caps down, you're on. Got enough on my shoulders without adding more dead weight to them. I'm not the man you need, pretty boy. Somebody's asking for a boot in their fuse box. No, and I ain't looking to be a babysitter, neither. Stake a claim somewhere else, pretty boy. She also has a huge number of unrecorded, empty dialogue topics where she would have commented on various locations and events. There's a series of reactivity lines that were meant to play depending on the courier's choices. This would have been a nice touch as Cass praised or criticized the player's actions. That was a mistake. No call for that. Could have handled that better. What I would have done. You handled that well. Good job. That was fucked up. Can't believe you just did that. Just when I think I'd seen it all. That was lower than low. Set an example? 
Mothers will follow. Proud of you. Color me impressed. Commenting on Cass's potential endings, Chris Avalon revealed, Oh, don't get me wrong, loved writing the ending slides. There's actually more than the ones there, but was asked to cut them. Notably, one of the final patches made Cass much less talkative than she was originally. Arcade Ganon has several unused lines of dialogue about Eddie. This sequence was meant to happen at some point after Eddie's Enclave origins were revealed. This reply would have followed the player asking, Is the Enclave's treatment by the Brotherhood influencing your decision? Some of the old-timers like Moreno hold grudges against the Brotherhood and the NCR. I'd like to think I'm above that, but you may be right. I'm not going to pout and cry if you give it to the Brotherhood. I'd rather they have it than allow all the knowledge to disappear. I'd just prefer that it go to an organization like the Followers, who are less likely to use it for violent purposes. He also has cut dialogue about another member of the Followers of the Apocalypse, Emily Ortao. These lines were meant to play during the quest, The Moon Comes Over the Tower. Oh, hello Emily. Yes, it is I, Arcade Ganon, fellow member of the Followers of the Apocalypse. Would I like to help infiltrate the Lucky 38? I'm so glad you asked. Early in FNV's development, the dev team recorded placeholder dialogue for testing, and Eddie still has a remnant of it. Jason Fader used impressions so the designers could differentiate characters, and in this case, he used Inigo Montoya from The Princess Bride. This line could actually play by mistake in the original game, and probably confused a lot of players. Could you bring your robot to one of our patrols so they can examine it? I'll have the robot mark the location on your map. Could you bring your robot to one of our patrols so they can examine it? I'll have the robot mark the location on your map. Veronica is the only companion with dialogue referencing the cut post-game state. These lines were clearly cut when it was decided the game would end after Hoover Dam. Not sure what my parents would think of me fighting for the NCR. But for New Vegas, it seemed like this was the best chance at stability. I don't regret it. Independent New Vegas. If that isn't redundant, I don't know what is. But I like its chances. Never sided with a group of marauders before, but I think the Brotherhood stands a better chance against them than they did against the NCR. That gives me some hope. For some reason, it warms my heart that we fought for the kooky old geezer. Guess he reminds me of someone. While many of these additions were minor, they would have made New Vegas into an even better game. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.